Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC Salt Lake City card from a contrarian bet from, from a contrarian betting breakdown perspective. And again, for those of you that are watching for the first time, um, what we try to do is, is identify who the semi-sharps and public is on and basically try to go against them. The, the idea being that UFC, unlike almost any sport, is completely conducive to uh, to to groupthink, to narratives, to narrative speak, and all kinds of just I don't know uh, MMA Twitter pylon. I guess that's the best way I could describe it, where people in in a sport that is ripe with chaos find a way to identify a completely binary outcome at the most. Um, sometimes everybody will agree on really one thing that can happen, <laughs> but at the very least the Twitter sphere is very prone to identify at least a binary outcome, meaning a if A wins, it will be because of this, and if B wins, it will be because of this. And unfortunately, the way life works and the way the betting markets work, life is just not that easy. Um, and this kind of uh, realization spans all forms of wagering where there's any kind of vague at all, um, from UFC to the sports betting market to the stock market. Um, once you have a story that's completely easy to tell, all I promise you is that it's completely overvalued. Okay. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm not saying it's even not that likely to happen. All I'm saying is that once a narrative becomes completely acceptable to even the, the, the most basic of, of, uh, of, of, of consumers, then you're, you know, you're dealing with something that you should be on the other side of. So what we try to do for UFC is identify kind of towards the end of the week what sides and what narratives and what, I don't know, like what method of victory is just seems the most obvious and essentially make sure that we don't play that. And and the purpose of that is, is yes, short term, yeah, let's try to win money in MMA, but long term, it's to train your 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 discerning mind to think about betting markets a little differently, to think about you know, uh, the whole thing is there's no such thing as a sure thing angle or, um, you know, if it's so easy to explain it to your five-year-old, it's probably a short, which is what used to used to be my mantra in the stock market. Um, to take a stock market example, I mean, whenever you could start saying, oh, the stock is a leader in its space, they have a strong balance sheet, strong management, a strong foothold on the industry, it's probably a short. Because everybody already knows that, and everybody's already bidding the stock up in anticipation of that. And that's sort of the way UFC works in, in a different type of way. And what makes UFC hard is that you don't have like a one cent spread like in the stock market. In in, in UFC, you're dealing with like a dollar four, with like a 40 cent spread in some cases, sometimes sometimes more. So to be able to just out analyze the public is is really difficult to overcome that kind of vig. So what we try to do is at least try to give you guys an edge with respect to the psychology. And what we like to do is, is make sure that you're thinking about things in, in a very, I don't know, in a different type of way. So let's go over the rules, what we do on every single one of these cards. We always bet one thing on every single fight, and that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second thing is we are going to bet one unit on every fight. And that, of course, is not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is always $180. And on this uh, Jewish New Year, 10 times high, it couldn't be more appropriate. And as I've said before, I think it's just kind of healthy for, you know, when people say what they're betting to actually say how much they're betting. Um, I know that units are kind of the, the term of art of the industry. And yes, people's bankrolls are different and people like to reduce things to unit, but I, I don't know. I, I just think it's a little more transparent and I kind of want to know what people are betting if they're going to tell me to, you know, to bet something. Anyway, so I'm going to be betting 180 on one thing every single fight on the card. And the other thing, which is always fun, is that I'm always going to presume that I'm going to lose everything because we're being contrarian. And so what we like to do is, is the for the main event, try to bet something that is going to get all of our money back, okay? So here we're going to have 12 fights, 11, you know, well, we can have two main events. We're going to call the, the last one the main event just to be 
you know, just to be uh, consistent. And we're going to presume we're going to lose all 11, and then we're going to get it all back in the main event. So it's just kind of a fun thing to do. All right, so let's just get started. And the good thing about this card is there are narratives all over the place. Uh, and there's, you know... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll get to them. There's kind of a uh, kind of catchphrase that people use to identify, you know, good fighters and, you know, good spots. And we're going to fade all of it. And I promise you this, that if, if you play what I'm going to be recommending here, you're, you're going to, you're going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to fly in the face of probably all the content you've been watching during the week. And you know what, that's that, if that's the case, we've kind of done our job. All right. So Court McGee against Tim Means. Um, this is one of the more popular underdogs on the slate. You have Court McGee. He's 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 tough. It's one thing. Very tough to finish Court McGee. Second thing is that, and here's one of the things you're going to hear throughout the course of the, uh, you've hopefully heard the course of the week, about this fight being at altitude. All right. Court McGee it lives in Utah. Court McGee has trained in altitude his whole life. And Court McGee has that dog in him. And he's one of three or four fighters that, quote, have that dog in him. And there's nothing more I like. Well, not nothing more. There are a few things I like more than fading fighters that have that dog in him. So the Court McGee side is the most loved side, probably on the whole slate. Um, so we're just going to get ahead, go ahead and take Tim Means. And since Court McGee, we know he can't be finished, we're going to take Tim Means inside the distance. So Tim Means inside the distance. Let's take a look. Uh, winning method. Tim Means inside. That means by TK or submission, plus 550 for 180. Let's go. All right. Uh, next one, we have Carla Esparza versus Tisha Pennington. So we have several just terrible things going against Carla Esparza. Number one, oh. She just had a baby, and because she had a baby, she's not going to have her head in it. You know, things are just not, you know, things are not going to go well for her. Second thing is that it's her retirement fight. Uh, you know, and we know that we don't like to bet fighters in their retirement fight. Okay, And, and, and so in this case, Tisha Pennington, she's more active. She doesn't, you know, she she had a uh, pregnancy as well, but she's recovered from that. And she's more, you know, she, her head is still in the game. And so, you know, Tisha Pennington is basically going to piece Carla Esparza up. So we're going to go ahead and take Carla Esparza plus the 150 for 180. All right, moving on. Ryan Spann versus Ovin St. Prue. Here we have another, just, I don't know where this is coming from, another very popular underdog. And you want to know why? Because Ovin St. Prue, he's, he's, he's got that, he's got that veteran savvy, number one. Number two, he just came off of a career performance. All right. So we know that he still has, has it left. And then here's, here's the, here's the beauty. Ryan Spann with the atrocious fight IQ. And that's all throughout the industry. You can't trust Ryan Spann. Terrible fight IQ. Ovin St. Pru, he's still got it. Let's take him plus the 200. Uh-uh, not happening. So we are going to take Ryan Spann. And as a matter of fact, we're just going to play him in round one. Okay? Enough is enough. Ryan, well, hold on a minute. Maybe not enough is enough. Because what people are saying is that if Ryan Spann does win, it is, is going to be early. Um, so what we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to take Ryan Spann by decision, plus the 600, let's go. Cesar Almeida versus Igor Puteria. So uh, unfortunately for Puteria, um, Al Almeida is is just a, just a terrible matchup for him. You know, if, if you were going to put someone up against Almeida to, to beat him, it would not be someone who's a primary striker. It would be a wrestler, someone who could take him down. And Puteria really is not that. So it's basically just going to be a matter of when Cesar Almeida knocks him out. So you know what you can't do? You can't bet Almeida. And you know what you can't do? You can't bet him by KO. So you know what you can do? Let's just take Puteria plus the 310 for the 180. All right, moving on. Austin Hubbard versus Alexander Hernandez. Here we go again. Austin Hubbard. 
He's got that dog in him. Oh, we love guys that have that dog in him. And you know what we like to do the, the most? We like to fade them. So we're going to take the Alexander Hernandez, who has the ex extra benefit of having fight IQ issues. Number two, taking it on short notice. And number three, just is someone you just can't trust. So we are going to take Alexander Hernandez inside the distance. Let's see. What are we getting from him inside the distance? Oh, oh, not, not Hubbard, sorry. Plus, oh, we can't, not by submission. Where it's going to be anything. Plus 250, Hernandez inside the distance against the guy that's got that dog in him for 180. Marina Rodriguez versus Yasmin Lucindo. Um, I have not heard a big consensus on this fight, um, except, you know, I mean, I've heard, you know, some cases made for Rodriguez. I've heard some cases made for Lucindo. Lucindo has the advantage in that she's younger. But then for some reason, in the for the women's fights, they don't really care about that that much. And they do, you know, respect the career of, of Marina Rodriguez. But the one thing they are going to be consistent about is that this fight is going to probably go to decision. So we're going to bet this to end inside the distance. So uh, let's see. Uh, fight lines. What do we got? Uh, round props that we want to do? No, fight props. Fight to go the distance. No plus 200 for 180. So we're well on our way for being 0-11, by the way. I can't wait for this main event because we are going to be 0-11. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Joaquin Buckley. So here we go. You know, Joaquin Buckley, you know, he basically has it everywhere. You know, it was okay. I shouldn't say that. Um, if this is a pure striking match at range, I guess Thompson has the edge, but Buckley has more power and he's got the clear path to victory, meaning taking him down and 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 grinding him and when you mix his wrestling with his um uh with his power it's just very very difficult to imagine a world where Stephen Thompson wins so we're going to go play Stephen Thompson Stephen Thompson plus the 190 for 180 okay we have Roman Delitz versus Kevin Holland this one's actually kind of tough because there are, you know, uh, they, there are people taking both sides of this. Um, so usually in a case like that, I'm probably just going to try to find something long to play. I mean, I really don't see anything contrarian here. Probably 50% are on the Delice side, 50% are on the Holland side. Um, but what we can do and when all else fails is play Holland by sub. <laughs> It's just something that it's going to, if you follow this channel a little bit, this is what we just end up doing with the Kevin Holland fights, especially when it's been said that maybe Roman Delice might be going for more grappling. So let's just take Kevin Holland by sub plus the 700. Um, again, this is not particularly contrarian. It's just kind of something we default to in most Kevin Holland fights because usually people hate Kevin Holland enough to bet against him and they love him enough to bet on him. So there's usually never a real consensus one way or the other. But Holland by sub is always live. And uh, plus 700, we're going to try it. All right. Um, Kayla Harrison versus Ketlin Vieira. Um, okay. There's really, there's only a couple of things you could do here. I mean, she's a huge favorite. And the idea is that she's just going to take Vieira down and finish her. Ah, so what can't you do? You can't bet her by submission. They can't even bet her by KO. Um, but what you can do is one of two things, and both of them are gross. One, you could play Kayla Harrison by decision, or the other thing you could do is do something which I have not heard recommended at all this week, and that would be just to take Ketlin Vieira, okay? Kayla Harrison is in their 30s, and and she's never really been tested deep into fights, and if, in fact, Vieira can kind of survive. She is probably better on the feet. So I don't know. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go whichever one is greater, either Vieira straight up or Harrison by uh, decision. So let's see what we got. I'll say, so Vieira by money line is plus 750. 
And what do we have? Harrison by decision. Minus 110? Huh? That's just ridiculous. Minus 110? How, how is she going to win this fight in a decision? I guess if she keeps taking her down and holding her down, but I would imagine that she would be favored inside the distance here. I guess not. This is kind of nuts. All right, you know what? Screw everybody. Vieira plus the 750. Let's try it. Uh, Jose Aldo versus Mario Bautista. Um. We've seen this fight before, sort of, kind of the up-and-comer. The Jonathan Martinez against Jose Aldo just got kind of taught a lesson. And Mario Batista is very, very similar. The, the problem here with Mario Batista is that his one of his main paths to victory is in the wrestling. And as everybody knows, nobody could take down Jose Aldo. So uh, I don't know how Mario Batista is going to win this. Um, he certainly is not going to get takedowns. Um, so... What can you do here? I mean, you could play Batista. Um, inside the distance, that's that's what you could do. And Jose Aldo hasn't been finished, I think, since the Eisenhower administration. So let's. Uh, boy, Batista by sub is plus eighteen hundred. Boy, oh boy. Well, let, let's 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 see what his. Let's see what his uh, record looks like. I mean, I don't know if Aldo's ever been subbed himself, but let's just let's take a look at this. Uh, look at look at all these subs. He's got three subs here. You tell me that that Jose Aldo just can't get subbed? I, I guess not. I mean, it's just, I mean, he's only lost. How many losses he have? He only has like eight losses. Marab. Got TKO, decision, decision, TKO, TKO. So he's never been subbed. Has Batista ever actually had a a knockout? Let's see that. Sub, sub, sub. It's a TKO. Sub, sub, TKO, TKO. Yeah, we're gonna try it. We'll take Mario Batista inside the distance. Where's double chance here? Um, Mario Batista plus three fifty inside the distance against the guy who never gets finished. All right, um, good idea, Sheets. Okay, so we've done ten. We have two left, and then we have the two basically the main events. But we're gonna treat the Pereira Roundtree fight as the main event. Um. Raquel Pennington against Juliana Pena. See people on both sides of this. Um, the only thing people are kind of sure about is that this fight is kind of go to the distance or going to go deep. So what we're going to try to do is bet the under here. Now let's see what, what lines there are for the under. Well, first we could just bet the fight to, to, to finish. That's kind of easy. Um, no plus one seventy five. Let's see what the let's see what the the total is here. Under three and a half plus two forty. Yeah, let's try that one. Under three and a half plus two forty for one eighty. All right, so let's now review the atrocious bets that we've made here. Um, let's. Oh, we got this here. Um. Court McGee. Oh, we don't want Court McGee winning by. See what we did? We want the other guy. We want means. We want we want to beat the guy that's got that dog in him, right? Let's see. So Tim Means inside the distance. Plus 215. Right. Okay. So Tim Means inside the distance to beat the guy with the dog in him. God knows how that's happening. Carlos Sparza in a retirement fight. You never win your retirement fight. Well, oh, well. Ryan Spann, actually by decision? No. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Well, so that's that's a loser. 
Pateria against the guy who beat uh, Pereira, and and Pateria is is not even going to go for takedowns. Okay, good luck. Uh, Hernandez against another guy that's got that dog in him by by uh, by finish. Yeah, okay. Um, Rodriguez against Lucindo, boring women's fight. We're betting it to finish. Good job. Uh, Joaquin Buckley, multiple ways to win the fight. Why are we taking Stephen Thompson? I have no idea. Holland by submission. This is actually a good play. Okay, I, I have to tell you, this is a good play. Uh, Vieira, we're the, literally the only people in the United States of America picking her, plus the 750. Uh, Batista, how is he going to get get Aldo down? How is he going to finish him? Probably isn't going to, so we're going to lose. Uh, Pennington, Pena, definitely going through decision, so we're going to lose that one. So we're going to lose all these. So what what do we got in the main event? All right. So what we have is... Kareel Roundtree versus um, versus uh, Alex Pahea. So here are one thing. Here are a few things that we know. Number one, the fight is finishing. Right? Number two, that uh, Roundtree has no business getting this title fight. However, however. He does have that kind of puncher's chance. So, so what 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 can we bet on that speaks to neither of those things? That's over eleven to one and's got a shot. Well, I can tell you right now what I'd like to do, but this is only plus nine hundred. Is Perhea by decision? But there are a couple of things you could do. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could you could play Roundtree in like a particular round to get a KO. I mean that 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 could actually get get it done. Like if you played say Roundtree round two, okay, plus eighteen hundred. All right, that that's fine. Um, or even round three. Now, now we've seen. Right, Pahaya get knocked out. You know, we we've seen it. So, and we've you know, and Roundtree does have power. So we pick the right round. You know, let's say that Pahaya just kind of plays with his food a little bit, gets a little bit, you know, safe, and Roundtree clips him. So I think that's one thing to do. But the other thing I really would like to try. Ugh, I'm gonna have to flip a coin about this one. Because this one it, it it deals with like the Brazilian you know macho man ah uh, slant here. I would love to try Pahea Pereira or whatever by sub. Um, oh, and it's fourteen to one too. I do think that he could get takedowns if he wanted them. I don't think he's ever gotten a sub, though. I mean, there's no way. He's a kickboxer. But does that mean he can't get one? So these are the two things I'm struggling with. These are my two choices. It's going to be Pereira by, Pereira by sub or round tree round two. I have to tell you, the thing that I can visualize a little bit more is actually round tree round two. Because you get around one where, you know, Pahaya just kind of just whatever, just tools around. And then round two, he just lets his guard down a little bit. And round three gets him. So we're going to try it. Uh, okay. Winning method. And it's going to be specifically round three. <laughs> Here we go. Where is this? Uh we got to find round props. I want the actual. It's not enough for me to just take round three, round two. I got to actually have. It's going to be the same thing, right? It's not going to be any different. Round three by KO in round two is plus 20, 2,000. Well, let's do it. Get all of our money back here. So we'll be able to put this in once we log off. Uh, you know, DraftKings is not like uh, 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 
Zoom so so much. So it's gonna wait till we log off of that. But uh hopefully that will hopefully you don't tail all these and lose all your money. But at least I'm putting my own money up there in support of the cause. Uh that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.